Welcome to section 6 of fungi. This is our fungi overview figure. In this video, we'll be discussing Malassezia furfur, which you can see right here. This scene will take place inside of a restaurant with this guy introducing himself to a blind date. I guess he doesn't think much of first impressions because he looks pretty dirty. Perhaps most appalling are his gross hairy armpits. Look at those malodorous stench clouds emanating from his pits. The word malodorous sounds kind of like Malassezia and is here to help you remember that this image is all about Malassezia furfur. We've intentionally made his armpits exposed to help you remember the word pit. Pit sounds like pityriasis and should help you remember that Malassezia furfur causes Pityriasis versicolor. This is a skin infection caused by the fungus, which we'll discuss more in a second. Sometimes you may also hear this called tinea versicolor, but don't get this confused with the dermatophytes we covered in the last video. Malassezia furfur is not a dermatophyte. Next, notice the summer special sign on the wall, the margarita, and a sun on the cocktail umbrella. These are all references to the summer, and are here to help you remember that this infection can occur during any time of the year, but that it's more common in the summer when the weather is hot and humid. This is because the pathogen is a yeast at cold temperatures, but is converted into the pathogenic mycelial form in the presence of heat and humidity. When this occurs, the mycelial form degrades lipids present on the skin. So, for example, sebum contains a high concentration of lipids, and malassezia degrades these lipids. The degradation of these lipids is necessary to sustain the required growth of the pathogen, but it also results in the production of acids. The acids inhibit the enzyme tyrosinase, which is involved in melanin synthesis. So melanin synthesis is stopped, resulting in areas of hypopigmentation. To help you remember this, we've shown this guy with oily hands squeezing a lemon onto a watermelon. The oil on his hands should make you think of lipid degradation. The acidic lemon should make you think of acid production and the melon should make you think of melanin. So putting all these ideas together should help you remember that the degradation of lipids produces acids that inhibit melanin synthesis. Now you can see that we've shown the poor soul that must wait on this guy. She seems a bit disgusted and is shown scratching her head in awe. We've shown her scratching her head to help you remember that tinea versicolor results in pruritic lesions. We've also shown the guy wearing a checkered shirt with white and dark areas to help you think of hypopigmentation and hyperpigmentation. You can also see that he has red spots on his shirt, which is to help you think of pink patches. So putting these ideas together should help you remember that the rash is characterized by areas of hyperpigmentation and hypopigmentation, and that pink patches may also be seen. This is an image of the rash. As you can see, there are areas of hypopigmentation and hyperpigmentation. Now you can see that we've added a plate of spaghetti and meatballs to the image. The guy got those red spots on his shirt because he was eating some spaghetti sauce that splattered all over him. Anyway, we've added this to the scene to help you remember that this fungus may exhibit a spaghetti and meatballs appearance on microscopy. This is a microscopic image of Malassezia furfur. In this image, we can see short hyphae that appear like noodles for example, right here. And we can also see little circular yeast cells that look like meatballs, for example, right here. The combination of yeast and hyphae is often described as a spaghetti and meatballs appearance. As you may have deduced from the image, Malassezia furfur is a dimorphic fungus, but it's a bit unique because you can see both forms at the same time in a host. So we can see the mycelial form as hyphae and the little circular yeast cells as the yeast form. Because you can see both simultaneously with the microscope, we decided to use the spaghetti and meatballs plate in the image rather than a butterfly to represent this idea. All right, now let's return to the image mnemonic and discuss treatment. Now you can see that we've added his date with her hands on a menu. We can see the words for sale at the top of the menu along with some prices. The word sale sounds like selenium and is here to help you remember that Malassezia furfur can be treated with topical selenium sulfide. Also notice that we've shown the waitress wearing a shawl with the letter A on it which is our symbol for azoles. So for those who have extensive disease, the recommendation is that oral azole medications should be used. All right, now that we've covered the image, let's review with a question. A 24-year-old female presents to the physician due to a pruritic rash, which she noticed several weeks ago. Physical examination reveals a rash on the patient's trunk with areas of hypopigmentation and hyperpigmentation. A sample of tissue is obtained, and a potassium hydroxide preparation reveals the presence of both yeast cells and hyphae. Which of the following risk factors is most likely associated with this patient's condition? A. Chronic alcohol use. B, poor hygiene, C, hyperhidrosis, or D, recent exposure to antibiotics. Hopefully from the question set, you notice that this patient has a pruritic rash with areas of hypopigmentation and hyperpigmentation. This should immediately make you think of Malassezia furfur and tinea versicolor. The KOH prep that has revealed both yeast cells and hyphae is describing the spaghetti and meatball appearance of the organism. So we can be confident that this patient has a Malassezia furfur infection causing tinea versicolor. With this in mind, the correct answer is C, hyperhidrosis. From the image, recall that the summer special sign on the wall, the margarita, and a sun on the cocktail umbrella 
are all references to the summer and are here to help you remember that this infection is more common in the summer when the weather is hot and humid. Based on this information, you should have been able to deduce that if a patient has hyperhidrosis, then this would be similar to a hot and humid environment in the summer, which would increase the risk of developing this infection. So again, under hot and humid conditions, the yeast form is converted to the pathogenic mycelial form, which can then cause disease. A, B, and D are not known risk factors for developing tinea versicolor. A and B are red herrings, and D is often associated with candida albicans, but not malassezia furfur. So A, B, and D are incorrect. And again, the correct answer is C, hyperhidrosis. And with that, we've covered everything you need to know about malassezia furfur.